Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to build a to-do list app with core data. You can name the project whatever you like, just ensure that you check the box that says use core data. I'm going to use a Git repository because I plan to share this project on GitHub. The first thing that we need to do is create a new file for our data model. You can name this file whatever you like. I'm going to name my file item. Let's click on our model and you can see that we have the option to create entities and attributes. Entities are similar to classes and attributes are similar to class properties. Let's give our item an attribute called name of type string and make sure that it's not set to optional. Create a second attribute and call it completed and set it to a boolean. Ensure that this one is not set to optional as well. Go to the main.storyboard and delete the view controller that is there. Add a table view controller to the canvas and in the attributes inspector, set it as the initial view controller. Go to viewcontroller.swift and subclass UI table view controller instead of UI view controller. Rename the class to to do view controller and also rename the file to to do view controller.swift. Next, go to the identity inspector and in the class field of custom class, select the to do view controller. Select the table view cell from the document outline and in the attributes inspector, name the identifier item. We need to embed this table view controller in a navigation controller. This allows us to add a title and add a bar button item. We can set the bar button item to be a plus button. When we click on it, we want to be able to add items to our persistent container. In the to do view controller .swift file, import core data. Create an empty array of our item objects and store them in a variable. We call we can call it items. Next, we need to make a reference to our persistent container which is defined in the app delegate.swift file. We can store this in a constant and call it context. Every iOS app has one instance of UI application. When an app is launched, the system calls the UI application main function among its other tasks. This function creates a singleton UI application object which can be accessed by using the shared class method. This is how we go about accessing the persistent container in app delegate. The data source methods are responsible for populating the cells with data. We're going to call number of rows in section and set it to return the number of items in our array. We also need to call cell for row at index path and this method returns a table view cell. We first need to define a cell and store it in a constant name cell. We're going to call table view dot dq reusable identifier and pass in the string item as the identifier and index path as index path. Next, we create a constant that represents one of the items in our array, then we set text label of the cell to the item name. We can then call the we can then use the ternary operator instead of the if statement. So if the item is completed, the accessory type is going to be a check mark, and if it's not completed, there will be no check mark. Open the assistant editor and control and drag from the add bar button item to the bottom of our class to create an IB action. We can name this button add button pressed. In this function, 
let's create a text field object and store it in a variable called text field. Create an alert controller and store it in a constant called alert. Create an action and store it in a constant called action. In the closure of the UI alert action, create a constant called new item, which represents a single item from our persistent container. Well, from our items in the persistent container. Set the name of this item to text field.text. Whatever text we enter in the alert will be the name of the item. Append the item to our items array and then save the item. Before we can save the item, we need to create a function to save the items, but we will work on that later. Let's add the action to the alert and add the text field to the alert. And in the closure, we can add some placeholder text. Finally, we can present the alert. In order to save the context, we just need to type tryContext.save, but this throws an error. We can handle the error by placing it in a do catch block. We can print the error if one arises. Now I'm just going to change the text in the alert controller before we move to the next step. The delegate methods are responsible for what happens when a cell is clicked. The first one is did select row at index path. The first thing that we need to do is call the select row on our table view. This means that the row will not be highlighted after it is selected. If the item is marked as completed and has a check mark when we click on the item, it is no longer going to be completed and neither will it have the check mark. We just want to call save items so that these changes are written to the context. The next method is can edit row at index path. This method simply returns a boolean. If we return true, this allows us to edit our table view cells. We then call commit editing style. If the editing style is set to delete, we first create an item that represents a single cell. Then we remove it from the cell and delete it from the context. Then we simply save these changes to context. Finally, we call the, the select rows on our table view. We do not need to call reload data on the table view, but when we call delete rows, this updates our UI. We need a function to load items when the app starts. An instance of NSFetch request collects the criteria needed to select and optionally sort a group of managed objects in a persistent store. A fetch request must contain an entity description or an entity name which specifies the entity to search. The entity that we want to search is item or well items. We can store this request in a constant called requests. We then fetch this request from our context and set it equal to items. As usual, this must be placed in a do catch block because it throws an error. There is one last thing that we need to do before we can test our app. We must call reload data on the table view in load items and save items. Now let's run the app and see if it works. So I need to upload this video to YouTube, maybe watch some Netflix before bed, and then get some rest. To delete these items, just swipe to the left. Now let me close the app and run it again to see if the item is there. It works. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.